on one. Hi, Team Beautifully Polished. This is Debbie Bry, Darlene Lavoy, and April Shook. We are here today for your week five of the summer training. I'm really excited because we have lots of, um, a couple great topics with lots of information. So let's talk about last week about our high point earners. All right, our three top point earners for last week. And um, some of you may not be turning in your points. Make sure you get those. When you do your homework, you get them turned in before the next lesson. Um, number three, coming in at 17 points, is Denise Dunn. Congratulations, Denise. Number 19 is Allison Clark. And number 22 is Tracy Wilson with 22 points. So congratulations, ladies. You're the top earners or top point earners for the week. And remember, when everything is said and done, we'll be doing drawings um, for lots of cool prizes. So if you haven't turned points in, make sure you can do them this week for this week's lesson and get those put in. And maybe you just are watching the videos and you don't care about the points. So hopefully, either way, you're learning a lot and taking a lot away from these calls. So let's talk about today. Today we have um, Darlene and Lavoy and April Shook with us. You guys heard Darlene um, week one, and so you kind of heard her credentials. But let me just remind you, she is a senior director and she runs an amazing team. She is a very technically savvy and loves computer and technology. So perfect topic for her today is um, Facebook uh, nail bars. So she will be talking second. And first up, we have April Shook, who is a director. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, I believe today is her one year anniversary. One year today, yes. One year today, and look at, here she is one year later as a director running training. How awesome is that? Super exciting. So um, I'm glad we could celebrate your anniversary with you, April. She has $26,884 in personal sales. She hit all of her jump starts. Her team of 47 people has accumulated $152,420. Pretty amazing in one year's time. And she is a teacher on top of this. So this is her second fun job. So um, congratulations to you, April. And April is here to talk to us today about vending events. So go ahead and take it away. All right, ladies. Hi, thank you so much for having me, having me today. As Debbie said, I am celebrating my one year with Color Street. So I'm very excited to get to come to you today and kind of give you some of the tips and tricks I've learned in the past year. Um, this is the first time I have ever done direct sales. So I am completely brand new, as many of you are. So I have learned how to do vending events from just trial and error. Um, one of the first things I want to talk to you about vending events is the time it takes. Vending events are a very time consuming process where if you are going to do an in-home nail bar or a Facebook nail bar, you're going to get things done within a few hours. This one's going to take you six to eight hours. So you really want to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck because nothing is guaranteed when you come to these shows. Um, it is a great place to find new contacts, whether it's going to be a contact to host a party, maybe just their first time purchasing, or maybe you might even find your future stylist there. So it is a great thing to do, but I want you to think about how much time you're putting into your Color Street business and how much time you're going to put into vending events. One of the things that I always look at when I am choosing a vending event is how much they cost. Well, one thing that corporates always asked us, if it was gonna be $100 or more, they asked us to submit, um, submit a request to be able to do a show. But if you didn't know this, actually corporate wants us to submit a request for any show that we are going to do. And to do that, you're just gonna to go to the Color Street customer service page and you are gonna submit a request, choose the option of events and parties, and you are looking for approval for the event. So that's one thing that you're gonna to wanna to do. The second thing is you're gonna think about how much money these events are gonna cost. Generally, I don't spend more than $40 for an event, and here's why, because as the math teacher, I have to break it down for you mathematically. If you're gonna sell a buy three, get one of all solids, which is $33, you're gonna make a profit, if you're only at your 25%, because it can always be higher, you're gonna make a profit of $8.25 off that one purchase, all the way up to $9.75 if someone buys a buy three, get one with all of your glitters and designs. So the fact you're only making eight to $9 if you're doing a buy three, get one, I know that if I have a $40 booth, I need to sell five buy three, get ones to even make 
out, make out even. Of course, I'm always looking for parties and new stylists, but if you're looking to make a return on your money for getting out there and spending all that time out there, think about the, how much money that you're spending. Um, as you're looking for those, those events, a really good um, idea when you're contacting the people is ask them how they are going to be advertising the event. How many people do they expect to have? And how long have they been participating in these type of vending activities? Is it their first year? Is it their 20th year? Also, is there another Color Street stylist scheduled for that event? You do not want to go to an event where you're competing with another Color Street stylist to get people to come to you. Um, it's, it's just very awkward, it's not fun, and we, we're here all to be friends and friendly, and I just want to make sure that you guys are making sure you've only got one person there. As you are planning for your event, Make sure that you get someone from either your downline or your upline to join with you because having at least two people there is the best way to do it. You want to get um, training if you're there with your downline. You want to train them at how, um, how you get out there in front of people. And if you're going with your upline, maybe they're going to learn something from you because you might be more outgoing than they are. So always take someone with you, help each other, train each other, and figure out a good system that works for the two of you when it comes to um, how you're going to split the sales, how you're going to split the customers. Um, I know that a few of the ladies that I have worked with, we have used our lead slips, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, that, that are on your Trello boards. But we take our lead slips, and we will mark a little star or something on that slip after our, a customer we've talked to reaches out. So then when we put them in the drawing, we know who to, who to contact um, or who to follow up with. All right. I would like you also to think of when you are um, setting up for your event, what is your goal for getting hostesses? What is your goal for getting stylists? And do you have anything for them if they're ready to sign with you right there? So I always make sure to take some stylist packets with me as well as some hostess gifts to get people to sign up to be a hostess right then and there, give a little bonus, um, and just make them feel special for being there. So you might think, okay, well, what do I do with my table? Because, of course, that's going to be what brings people in. Um, I, when I get my table, I like to make a nice uh, black tablecloth with the color street liner. And I like to find things that build um, some depth. So there are some great displays that a lot of the ladies on Beautifully Polished have made. So I am going to ask you ladies in our comments, um, post some of your vending event tables. Let us see what you have. Because I didn't want to show you guys what I do, because I think everybody does so, so many amazing things. I'll post a couple of mine in the comments, because I change mine up all the time. Um, one thing I recommend is having a contest. I always want to get people to stop at my booth and of course I'm out there saying hello but how else am I going to get their information is other than oh can I have your information for a sample well can I have your information and thanks for trying a sample now you're entered in to win a free set of nails so I have a enter to win sign I usually have this really fun um, bag that's all up and, and pretty and I always let the ladies know I'm raffling off a set at the end of the show so that gets the ladies more likely to give me their information than just now nah, I'll get, I'll just take your info and come back um, lead slips. Lead slips are absolutely always out on my table and you'll find those on in your Trello board. This is the one that I tend to use because there's four of them on a page and they have the option to host, to join, just to get um, fun information or just to get emails. So I can get their um, name, their email, their phone number, all of that information, enter it into the basket. Now when I'm working with some of my other ladies at the, at the um, events, if one of us puts a star, one of us puts a, puts a heart, we then separate separate our contact sheets and then we each do our own drawings. So there's actually more winners than just one based on how many people we were talking to. So that's a real fun way um, to get ladies go, oh, well, there's gonna be more than one winner tonight. Um, I have some things that people want to know about the product. For instance, one of my, my things I want to have up is that we have 100% nail polish, no heating. I want something that just draws some attention in, as well as I place my pricing specials. So I want you guys to know something that I do that I've heard us talk about um, on Beautifully Polished of what do we do when it's cash and carry. I take mine and I take a dollar up. 
So the solids are 12, litters are 13, and designs are 14. That way I'm not dealing with change and spending a bunch of, because a lot of people don't have cash, by the way. They always have their credit card. But I'm not dealing with change, not trying to figure out um, what it would be with shipping. And I kind of get those ladies in going, well, I'm saving, saving you on shipping today if you do a buy three, get one. So having your prices up and some really cute little designs or some cute frames up there just to let the ladies know what's going on. Before the door is even open, I am going to challenge you at any vending event, go to the other vendors, see which ones of them have heard of Color Street, which ones have not, and see if you can get a sample on those ladies. I have found at vending events, I will be sitting there trying to talk to a customer and tell them how much I believe in the product, and of course I do, because I'm selling it. But I had an origami owl lady right behind me, and she actually came over to my table. She's like, listen, ladies, you got to see what she put on me. It's amazing. She's been at a couple of shows with me. She constantly is helping me out with my sales and using her own testimonial. And you never know which, when one of those ladies are going to be like, wow, that product is so new. I'm ready to join. And that could start a conversation in getting you a new team member. Um, so keep it simple when it comes to your table. Show off the product, whether you use some, I like to use some height because our products are very lo little. Make sure you have some lead sheets, have something to raffle off, and have that product available. I know that we are not always saying you need to have a lot of stock on you, but if you're gonna do a vending type of event, people are there to buy at a vending event. So make sure that you have stock in order to supply all of your customers. After you are done with the show, your show is not over. You're going to be going through those lead slips and you're going to go and enter all those lead slips in your back office so that you have those customer contacts. So when you're sending out emails to all of your customers, they're going to get it too. I want you to either email, call, or text your winner of the strip to wish to tell them congratulations and also ask them to be on your VIP group and congratulate them there. Then I want you to email, call, or text all of your non-winners just to check in. How does your sample lasting? Or if you remember what sets they got, ask them which one they've picked first, if they've gotten a chance to join your VIP page. And you can say, I'm sorry that you weren't a winner, but I would love to help you earn some free product. Let's host a party. Um, you always want to be offering your business offering parties, and then the last thing, offering sales. Because even at a vending event, there are ladies looking for a brand new business and it might just be with you. Um, so those are the main things I thought about for uh, my party. Oh, one additional thing, of course, I forgot to, I put everything out here so I could not forget. But um, one thing I use in my display, I have our strips all laid out. So ladies can put them up towards their finger. And ladies love taking this and holding it up to their finger to really see what it will look like against their skin tone. So some type of display that helps the ladies really visualize it and see all of those extra beautiful colors along with having your catalogs out um, is a great tool to get those ladies excited. So I don't know if Dar or Debbie, I know that you guys both do vending events. Is there any other suggestions you might offer these ladies that I may have forgotten today? I think you had some really great points, April. Um, I'm, some of the things I just wanted to highlight um, that you brought up was letting corporate know, because I know at the beginning we were doing that, then we weren't. So definitely get that request in there to corporate. Um, I liked your, um, oh, I liked your putting shapes on when you do it with other people. Um, distinguishing which lead slip. Another thing I could add to that too is um, anything you can remember about that person. You could write quick notes. As soon as they walk away, you know, write down what they had on or um, if you had a conversation with them, just anything that would trigger when you follow up with them. So I like the idea of um, your shapes on there. Um, oh, in um, your PDFs you showed, I was thinking maybe you could add those to the comments in this group. Because um, people may, you know, of course, anything that people, saves people time, why why uh, reinvent the wheel? 
Yeah, I will say one of, one of my stylists, uh, Jessica Branchow, was the one who made this for one of her events, and I've stolen it a bazillion times. So she, I'm like, it's perfect. It's got the colors in there. It's got everything on, you know, with the deals and the pricing. And I have never had somebody question me about doing the dollar up. I kind of tell them, you know, if I did this, you know, a single strip, it'd be thirteen seventy eight plus the three dollars shipping. I'm really just saving you some money today. And they go, oh, okay, never mind. And then I tell them I'm a math teacher, so that confuses them anyway. Right. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing. I love how you are able to break it down mathematically when you think about the cost. Because some of these vending events, you're right, get so expensive. So you really do need to look at, um, at you know, making your money back. You want to, if it's $500, you know, you're probably not going to make your money back if you're doing that by yourself, unless it's a multi-day event and you can share with other people. But again, we should go into these events, like April said, looking for one stylist to join the team, two nail bars, and then the selling is the bonus, the icing on the cake. So, um, you know, go in and start high at the top of the mountain and work your way down to the sale. Because remember, people at vending events are there to buy. That's the whole reason they're there is to shop. So don't be intimidated talking to them. They are there to shop. You're not imposing on them. You're just providing them what they're really there to see. So thanks, April. That was great. Did you want to add anything, Dar? Nope. I'm, I, I took some notes too. I, I thought that was really great. So yeah. yeah, we can all, that's what I love about this is we can all learn from each other. We've all done vending events, but again, everyone tweaks it to themselves. So you can always change, just like you said, you change your setup, you know, you change it for the holidays, you change it, you know, to what type of event you're doing. So, you know, we always are changing and adapting to what, what's current. One other thing I highly recommend if you're doing vending events, you want to be able to accept credit cards because ladies don't mm -hmm. come with cash very often. So um, if you haven't joined with Square, talk with someone in your upline. They will have a link for you to get $1,000 in free processing. Um, get that, um, that app on your phone because that's what ladies are going to do. And when they only have a certain amount of cash, but you tell them they'll take a card, they'll buy more. Oh, yes. And a note to add to that, I have Square and now I got a new phone. I'm actually into the iPhone 8 now instead of the 6. So now I need the adapter for my Square. So just something to keep in mind too, if you have a Square and then you update your phone, you got to make sure you update your Square as well. Right. All right. So now we're on to Darlene with um, Facebook Nail Bars. Thanks, April, and welcome, Darlene. Thank you, Debbie, <clears throat> and thanks, April. There was a lot of good notes that I was writing down myself. Um, as I've done a, a couple of events uh, myself, um, I really think the vending events are a great way to get your name out there and to get new contacts. Um, and what I wanted to focus on today was um, Facebook nail bars. Now, I have a couple of people on my team that have really done very well with Facebook nail bars, which is why I felt um, that we needed to talk about that because um, we are a party planning business, and the more we can get our get parties um, in, we can, the more that we can get parties, the better we're going to do with our personal volume. So, um, what April said about um, you know ho having information about hosting a party, sometimes I will actually have host a party, get a free gift, and I'll just get some really cheap gifts to give out um, at vending events and then I have information ready to go with dates ready to go that that people can part can plan for that event as well um, and whether you do them on in person or in on Facebook you know it, doing them in person it takes a lot of time but but it's a lot of product in one day on Facebook you can have a lot going at one time so that you can get more done in a month so there's a really good balance of both of them um, I just want to try and make it a little bit easier um, for you about Facebook. So I have put together a whole new Trello board for Facebook parties based on some of the, the Facebook parties that I've been invited to from other stylists and from what I've done with, in my own parties. Um, I, I don't, you know, you don't have to use these graphics, but I wanted to put it in one place for you to, to get to it and to learn how to um, create a, a um, a good Facebook and to be able to get the follow-ups after that Facebook party is done. So um, one thing I wanted to talk about is how to create on Facebook um, when you're ready to create your your party, whether you're doing an, an event or a group is up to you. So Facebook events <clears throat> um, can only be run for a two-week period. 
That's, that's what, how Facebook is running them. How, um, and you can, inv you can invite people to them and, and uh, still post in them when it's done and people will get the notifications. In a Facebook group, <clears throat> you can use third-party posting apps. Facebook has taken away the ability to um, use third-party posting apps in events. So if you're wanting to use a third-party posting apps, maybe the groups are for you. Now, <clears throat> um, the groups have been a better option for some people because you can, you can have better follow-up in a group. If that group is not like um, taken, you know, if you, if you don't delete the group, you can follow up with the, those groups in the future when you have a new line of product coming out like we do with the follow line coming out. So that's a good follow up. So how do you go about doing this? All right, I'm going to show you the Trello board now. I'm going to share my screen with you and show you the Trello board that I have um, that I've designed for beautifully polished based on some other things that we've done I also have a link on there for um, for a mock nail bar that Jessica Moten did for beautifully polished so that people can get into that so I have I have these boards here um, and if you don't have a Trello board you need to get one <laughs> because these things can organize I can get on my phone on my Trello board and I can download these pictures very easily so um, there, I've, I've added some things from your regular Trello board that um, are in there, like getting the hostess buy-in, so scripts, and how, what you can do um, to, to get some nail bars booked, whether they're, again, on Facebook or in, um, in person. Um, here is a checklist for creating a Facebook event, clicking on the home screen, and just putting in the information that they asked for. So I'll show you right now how to create an event. So I right now I'm on a computer, so I'm going to do a, um, I'm gonna go to my home screen, and then I'm gonna go to events. And then you create an event right here. And so create a private event. And then you just go and fill out, you can do a theme, or you can, you know, I recommend uploading a photo. I don't ever do a theme, and I call it um, whoever's nail bar. So let's say we're doing one for Debbie. Debbie's, Manny, Manny's, and Margaritas. Are we having Margaritas, Debbie? Yes, we are. Margaritas. Um, some people, you know, you can do that in person, you know, and just say, hey, come with your margarita, or, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. I, People just like to um, have different themes and stuff, and it makes it kind of fun for the rest of the customers. Um, location, um, and I would just put from the comfort of your own home or online or whatever. Um, just make sure that people understand that it is on Facebook of your own home. Um, and I'm going through this because sometimes people, you know, are visual learners and it helps them. So you can see right now that it's not, it's going to, allow, if I pick on the 13th um, start date and I do an end time, it's only going to let me go out two weeks from that date. So if I pick a date in the future as the start date, say I pick the 31st, I can still start posting in that event, but then I can still go out to the 14th. And so that'll be longer in the future in an event. And description, um, I use a description, a, a particular description um, to get people interested. And what I, what I would do if I were doing this event, I would go right back to where I am on my Trello board. Here's a description right here. Um, when you set up the, the, the group or the event, make sure to put some sort of description. And here's one that I love. And that's what I put in here. I have some questions for you gals. Do you like wearing, do you hate wearing for nail polish to dry? Just get them interested in what you are about to show them. So I just go here and I copy, I copy this um, and then I can paste it into my description. It just makes it that much easier for you. Why reinvent the wheel like Debbie was just saying. And um, then I just paste it into the description. Okay. Um, guests can invite friends. Of course, yes. You would want that. <laughs> yes. So create the private event. Okay, I don't have a picture all ready to go for this one, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. But here's where you wanna go ahead and edit this, and that's when you can add a co-host. You can't do it until you've already, so I'm gonna add Debbie as a, as a co-host to this, to this and save it. Okay, and then she can start inviting her friends. Um, and it, it's good to you know, get everything up, the, up there before you invite your host so that um, she can start inviting her friends. 
don't post a whole lot in there until she does invite her friends because they're going to miss half the posts that you posted in the first place. So that's how to, uh, that's how to start an event. I'm going to start a group for you. So I'm going to go right here and to create group. I, can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. So create group. So name your group. We're going to call it again, Debbie's Manny's and Mark's. I'm going to earn so many free nails. I'm so excited with all these parties. <laughs> yes, you are. And so I'm going to invite Debbie to this group. Okay. You want to invite your host. So I'm going to invite Debbie and it's a closed group. You can make it a, a public group, a, a closed group or a secret group. And you want it to be a closed group because um, you just don't want anybody coming in there. And you want your hostess to feel like her customers are um, protected in a way too. Um, and I always pin that to my shortcut so that I can get to it easily, especially when I have a, a Facebook group going on, a party going on at, say, at that moment. So then I'm going to create that, okay? So now I'm looking at, I want to add members to my group. That's what your, that's what your other person, that's what your hostess is going to be doing. I want to look at my members here. And once Debbie accepts that um, invitation to um, be in this group, I can click next to her name and make her an admin. And that's what you want to do for your hostesses. You want to make them an admin. Okay. And then what you want to do is you want to edit the group settings. And this is where you're going to be able to put in your, um, your description. You're going to pick a group type. And I just found this out. So you can actually do um, events and plans. And that's what I would recommend. Now, Facebook has cha changed their uh, logarithms all the time. And um, they just recently made it so that people in groups, they see the highlights. They actually have to go into notifications in the group and um, click on a button um, and, um, sorry, click on a button and um, choose to um, see all the posts. So um, I don't know how to make that different, but um, I guess we're going to find out. So um, I put the same description in here in my group. You can ta make tags. I don't use tags. Um, I have it as a closed group. So um, I don't add a location, um, but add apps here. If you're going to be using a third-party app, you want to add your apps. Now, SynthShare will direct you to do this in, um, when, if you try to use SynthShare for your posting, but if you're doing this anyway and you're, getting, you're um, setting it up, you might as well just add that as a, as a third-party posting app to add to the apps that can post in that party for you. Um, there's also post my party. Um, I have some different ones that are on the Trello board for that are recommended for you. So I don't make any other changes in this. Um, automatic membership approval. Um, anyone in the group can post. I do click on all posts must be approved by the admin or moderator. You don't want someone just kind of like being rude and, and posting something really funky in your group because it can look bad for all your customers and you know, you want to make sure that that everybody that you or the hostess can approve those because you never know who you're getting in your party and you want to make sure that you know you keep it keep it clean <laughs> um so all group story posts must be approved as well you can do photos and uh, a group post approved by the man a group story post must be approved by admin or moderator i don't know how that's different but it is so i'm just going to do Choose both of them and I'm going to save that. Okay, so there is my party started. Okay, I can upload a photo. Um, right now I have one for uh, another person. I and I to make my group photos, I download images from the internet. I use Word Swag to make my graphics for my for my um, photos. And in Word Swag, they will allow you to actually um, make that particular size for Facebook groups so that it actually fits in that window, okay? So then I wanna go back to my posting app or my um, Trello board and I can see here, you wanna work with your hostesses. Uh, it's really important to work with your hostesses and um, create goals for them. Find out what they are wanting. So what I send to my hostesses, even if I'm doing a Facebook, Facebook party, is I will send her a hostess packet. So um, there's a little tab here about a hostess packet, what I send in the hostess packet, um, and that has a portable nail bar, 
It has the hostess information. It has reasons to become a, a Color Street stylist. And do you know Frank? Because um, even, um, even our hostesses can use this Frank list to determine who to invite, friends, relatives, um, acquaintances, neighbors, and kid contacts. They say kid parents on there, but kid contacts. I use S for social media as well. Um, and then I have three other um, tabs that you can look at. There's a hostess wish list. Have your hostess do a wish list and show her. There, here's a really good one that I just found, um, and I'm going to start using it, um, on a graphics page. And I have links to the graphic pages that I use. Graphics for Nail Art by Norma Clark is a, the best one to use because she is an actual color street stylist. I think some of the other ones try to sell too much to us. You know, they try to sell their graphics and um, you don't really need to have all that done. Um, you, there's, there's a lot of graphics out there that are free and I'd hate for you to spend money on something that, that someone's, you know, just trying to make a buck on the rest of us. Um, so here again is on, on this one is the, the Frank list and also what's on your wish list. And then it shows her how, how does she make that wish list come true. And there's our hostess rewards there. So you can put that in her little packet and then just kind of, I try to make a goal of the first $300 um, as far as the goal, but they need to know that it's a qualified party is at least $150 and three paying customers. And you need to make sure that your hostess knows that. And you, you can you can coach them and just say, look, you know, if you want these nails, you let's get your party to three hundred. You get free shipping that way, and um, you can kind of update the hostess on her goals. And when somebody orders in the party, um, you can let her know, hey, so and so ordered, or they will be able to see it because you're going to be thanking people in your party. So let me move on to um, here and here's um, there's I want to go back. I'm sorry to the hostess coaching part. So in here. Um, <clears throat> one of our, uh, one of my stylists, Crystal and Musselman, um, one of the leaders on my team, she uh, created this graphic, and it's really good graphic to show um, your hostess what you need to do. Your hostesses need to be active in the party. On Facebook, her friends don't want to hear from you. You're selling to them. They want to hear from her. So if she can post a picture of her nails, why she started, why she likes Color Street. Um, so you send this to your hostess and tell her, you know, uh, a lot of people, uh, add a lot of people to the group and it says like and comment on every post, party goals, and uh, put samples on everyone you know, put a testimony, post a picture. So that's a really good graphic to send to your hostesses. Um, another thing, another one is this one, host tips. Like, share, comment, tag friends. So they can tag people in the photo. With the logarithms with Facebook, um, you want to make sure that they are also posting it on their personal Facebook page. So hostess coaching, um, there's some checklists for hosting a live nail bar online. Um, and some of those are actually live nail bar, like if you're only going to do a two hour one. A lot of my Facebook pick, Facebook parties are like two, uh, two weeks long, not two hours long, two weeks long because I, um, I post throughout the, throughout the time. Um, oftentimes you'll start getting orders right away and then you'll, it'll die down. And then when you post, photos about, you know, last call for orders, then people are like, oh, I need to order, da 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 da, da. Um, So uh, message to your hostess right here. Initially, when she starts out, if, if you have her post something on her Facebook page, I send this to, in a private message. And this, again, is from Crystal and Musselman. She um, has a lot of good ideas, so um, I just want to give her credit for those. Um, it, and it just says, post this image along with some Color Street info, in some info on Color Street and what you love about it on your Facebook page and see who's interested in being added to your party. So this graphic right here just says, ladies, please check your Facebook invite events for my invite if they're having an event. Um, you can also um, get ready to sparkle. You're invited to a Color Street nail bar um, Facebook event. That's, that's another graphic that they can use on their, on their page. Here's another one. It's a blank graphic. You can put the details down in here, um, whose party it is, and you can send this to her. Um, download this and um, put word swag on it and um, make it their, their name. Online only starts when it start uh, when it's starting, and you can send that to her so she can post it on her personal Facebook page with a testimonial about why she likes Color Street and why she's having a party. Getting your getting your hostess to buy into this and to be involved is 
the whole key to the success of a Facebook nail bar. So you have to, you have to let your hostess know, yes, I do expect you to do some work on this along with me, you know, um, and tell them, uh, I can give you all the information for your friends that, that I can give, um, but they want to hear from you. And telling them that, that, there's no shame in telling them that, you know, I mean, I tell, I, I tell all my hostesses that they want to hear from you. They don't want to hear from me. So um, then I do an introduction. I start with an introduction and you can do that before she invites her people. Um, that can be one of your first posts. So you want to make sure you introduce yourself um, and as the stylist and, and introduce your hostess. Do a brief um, intro as how you came into Color Street and, and how the party will go. I, you're going to post over two weeks. You're going to post over a week. And you know, when, if you're going to be doing any um, giveaways or uh, anything like that, you can post that right away. Um, Cause there are some games and stuff that you can play. If, if people like comment or, you know, people can get points, you know, first order can get so many points. And if they like and comment on posts, um, just determine how much work you want to do because that's a lot of follow up to, to do those raffle tickets, the, the drawing in a party. So, um, I, I have pricing posts here. You want to always make sure people know that we have two specials, um, and that they can order, um, order at any time. A lot of people think that um, uh, they won't get their orders until the party closes. And um, I make sure in my post, my first post, that I say order anytime. You don't have to wait for the party to close for your items to ship, and they will ship directly to you, not the hostess. And I tell them to take advantage of the promotions. Here's the wording I use for my first post. So I would just copy and paste this, um, copy it like that. And then I always put a do not forget your free because. Um, well, we might not need that with a new system coming out because it's going to actually make people, our new back office is actually going to make people click on, I do not want, want my free item. <laughs> Proceed without my free item. So this might not be a, a problem, but I want people to understand that they need to put all items in their cart and the system will choose the lowest um, price item will be taken off at checkout. So I include that in my first post. Um, then I just go about doing some um, posting, and I've posted some pictures of real of real nail fees. Um, we call them nail fees in here. This is my solids post. So I talk, I, I I have in here our solids are super weighed at an instant pop of color, and again these are from other people. I've just chosen the best wording I like, and you can change it and make it your own. But it gives you an idea of what how you should go about your posting, and you want to post um, initially. Uh, um, I post quite a bit in the first two days because I, I'm just getting the information out there. And again, only until you, your hostess has invited their guests. And make that known if they're not inviting their guests, um, you can just say, post a little reminder to them and say, hey, I want to start posting and I don't want your guests to miss out on some of the posts. So um, if when you get, when you get your, your guests invited, I'll start posting in the party. Because you want to make sure they know that you're waiting on them. Um, if if, it, if they're taking some time to do that. So like here's, here's all of our solids, Aspen Sky, and I've, got, I've downloaded these from the Nail Fees, um, the Nail Fees uh, group page on Facebook. So there's Aspen Sky. And I think people like to see those um, on fingers. Um, it just works out better for people. They can't really, you, you can't really show them in person, so you're showing them on nails. And uh, so I start out with my solids and glitters, and I have that all here. I use that 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 picture right there as my first my first one in the post, and then all the glitters follow. Um, and then I have um, I have a a card for ombres, uh, nail art, which is the glitter arts and the um, the rest of the designs, the French, and I also have a video in the French. Um, <clears throat> as well there's two videos there for you to download the company has one and then there was one by amanda thomas who i was able to download from her um, for the french and then um the uh our sports i did a separate one for sports just because um that's the way i wanted to separate it out um because i didn't want them to be neglected in the nail art designs um pedicures because a lot of people don't uh, recognize that um, that they can actually put them on pedicures um, layering glitters that was just a post that somebody started doing and I was like oh this is brilliant because 
I'll tell you, Shangri-La and any, I, both, most of these are probably, um, yep, Debbie's got some Shangri-La on her nails. So layering glitter is there too. Um, I have a summer post about our summer nails and then a new post with our glitter dip nails. And once, you, once we get the fall nails out, you can add another card right here and start adding some of those pictures for our fall line. And see how easy it is to just add a card to that and then you can start adding some pictures there by going to the attachment. I'm gonna show you really quickly how to get to the nail face and how to search in a group for something you're looking for. Graphics for photos, graphic groups for photos. So here's here's the the, the um, link for the groups, um, the graphics for stylist for Norma Clark right here. You're going to need to know that our presidential founder is Miss Debbie Bry right there, and um, because you're going to have to fill out you know just some information. You might need your stylist ID and your sponsor name, but I, you most likely need your presidential founder. So that information is right up there for you. So if you click on this and you're not part of that group, you can actually just click on the link and then join. So right now I'm gonna to go to the, the nail fee group and here's where you can search. Like say you wanna, I wanna look for, um, let's say I wanna look for Charleston blush. Charleston blush. You just put it in the search bar. Oh, it helps if you spell it correctly. Charleston blush. So then you can start looking for, say here's someone that, that posted a picture on, on here with Charleston blush and a, oh, that's pretty. Look at that. So pretty. Uh, Rosenberry Nails. So that is someone who actually, that's her name, Rosenberry Nails. That's not so bad to copy down if you want to use that photo. I recommend not using a photo that has somebody else's website on it. It's confusing to your customers. Um, no matter how much you give them the, uh, the links to things, uh, it's the picture that they're gonna remember. And you wanna make sure that you don't have other people's links on those pictures. There's plenty of pictures in here that people post without their links on it. Um, if it's just the watermarks on it, now see right here, you don't want that. That one has mycolorstreet.com slash Erica Booth. Um, I, wouldn't, I would never use that. I would, just use, I would just breeze past that and look for another one that I can use. Now that one's just got their, their name on it. That's not a problem. I could use that post. But I might still scroll down and through and find one that doesn't even have it. Charleston Blush and Shangri-La. That's a perfect one. So now I can click on that and I just go save image as. And I have folders in my back office or in my, I'm sorry, on my computer where I go Color Street and then I have colors. And then I just save it. How I want to save it, I can do, um, just change the name to Charleston Blush, Charleston Blush, and Shangri-La. Okay, and so you're saving the picture for yourself. And you can upload that back into your Trello board if you want to, because what can happen then if you have it on your Trello board, you not only have it in your computer, but now you have it on your Trello board so that you can actually get it from your phone as well. And the reason you would want some of these things on your, be able to get them on your phone is because when you're doing thank you posts for some of your, um, some of your purchases later on, I use the actual photos from the, from here, like say they purchased at the Plaza, Shangri-La and something else. I'll go to my solids on, in, in this post, and I'll, if I don't already have it downloaded, I'll download the, pic, the, the pictures that they did. And I will go ahead and go down to where I have the thank you pictures. And I'll choose a thank you picture. I'll download one of the thank you pictures and put that in a, um, I use live collage. I can download, see, I can download that. And then I'll use live collage to put all the pictures together and then post a thank you in the party, in the Facebook party as people start to order. Because once people start to order, it starts getting other people ideas about, ooh, I like that combination. And they, you know, it, it promotes more people purchasing. Now, once you've gotten those first couple of days done um, and you've done all your posting, I've, I still have, I, there's all of them um, there. And I, um, you want to start like posting some different things to kind of keep the party going. And what you want to do, a lot of the practices say to post three times a day for Facebook. Think about when you look at Facebook. You look at it when you first get up before you go to work, you look at it on your lunch hour, and you look at it in the evening, maybe when you're getting off work, and maybe when you're going to bed. So 
Think about those times and you can actually schedule those in your third party apps. So that's when you'll want to start um, scheduling your posts and doing them two or three times a day. Um, so like I've seen these, oops, I spilled Color Street on uh, all over the rug. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny, so I use that quite a bit. I also like use little conversation starters, like um, can you come up with, um, oh, so here's, here's a post for acrylic nails. Yes, you can do them on acrylic nails. I might post a uh, frequently asked questions post, and those are graphics that I got off the graphics page. Um, I'm trying to go through this a little bit quickly because I don't want to keep this training too long, but um, I, w I want to you to recognize the benefit of the Trello board because it has it all in one place for you. If you want different graphics, here's where you can save all your graphics for yourself. I am going to post a link to this Trello board so that everybody can get on it. You can make your own copy of this Trello board, and I'll show you how to do that really quickly. But so here's one that says, um, can you name a song that has Color Street in the title? These are just conversation starters to keep the information going in the parties and keep people engaged. What's worse? You know, some of these things are really fun to have. There's one that says, how do you feel when, how do you feel when, um, <clears throat> when you mess up your polish? Use a GIF to show that. And then there's a lot of, um, Norma posted a lot of these, this or that. What do you like with this outfit? Now I might not use this one, um, even though I posted it in here because it does have a retired style. So you want to refrain from using retired styles that people can't buy because it's just teasing them, basically. <laughs> I know you're laughing at me, April. I see you. You're laughing with me, right? Um, so I also do a um, how long do they last post. So um, they can take the Color Street Challenge and um, apply it an accent nail, and this is a way you can get them in the sample. I might post that earlier on in the, in the week. Because I also do, in my hostess packet, I send that hostess um, samples so that they can put them on their friends. I use a sample card that we have all been using. Um, if you need a link to that, I can post that underneath too. Um, but um, I use a sample card and I send the, the hostess samples so that now her friends have my information when they want to order them as well. But your host is putting them on their friends is key to getting more people interested in your party. When they can see how easy it is, whether they've watched the video in your party or not, if that hostess puts them on them, it, it's, it's a game changer. It truly is. And it's a really good way to flip a hostess because they're like, wow, that was easy. Um, I have this post that I made when you try to a new nail design, but also want to show how long they last. And I put the struggle is real because <laughs> that was from Bitmoji. It just said the struggle is real. And I changed it because I saw somebody else add that. Um, you know, like I said, why re reinvent the wheel, but try to find, um, good wear posts. Um, this is 13 days of Tokyo lights. You can see a little bit of wear on this nail, but, um, mostly you see the growth before you see the, before you see the wear. Um, just fabulous posting. Um, so you want to show how easy they are, show how, how durable they are, and basically show the designs that we have in your party. So here's the thank yous, all the graphics that I've downloaded for you. Um, here's some posts for the last day. So um, you, you want to say last day to order, but you also want to promote your, having a party and joining your business. So here's a post that someone had, like it, place an order, love it, host a party, want it all, join my team. And you can put a link to your website under the join thing. And how you get that is just by going to your website, your customer landing page at www.mycolorstreet.com backslash whatever your name is. Mine is Aunt Dar. And if you go to the little tab that says join, you can copy the URL and put it right underneath there and they can, they can look at all the information about joining your team. Um, you could, they can even get the comp plan there. And that's the best way to kind of get people to go into your website as well to look for the information. Um, there's information about hosting, hosting, like liking hostesses wanted, no experience needed. You want to make sure you, you offer the party and the business to other people in the party. And also you want to have them join your VIP. Now, I didn't post a link to my VIP party here. Um, I know there's a couple graphics I'm probably going to have on here by the time you guys get this um, about join my VIP group. 
if there's people in there that um, that have purchased, make sure that you get them in your VIP group, and that's great follow up. Um, if they've also ordered, they will they will be in your back office, and you'll be able to follow them up with email. Now, Norma Clark also has done a party summary. I love the party summary because you can actually put down information on the part. This is for in home or catalog or um, Facebook party, um, but you have all the information you need for the hostess and when you called her, if you've mailed her a, a hostess packet, if you sent her a thank you note, a pre party call. Um, this is just a really good summary. How many orders she has, what kind of booking she has, and this will help you when you're trying to check out of the party. Um, I just I, uh, I, I kind of like that. And I did find one for vending events, uh, kind of like an after action report, April. Just a uh, fun note there. All right, I'm gonna close that out. I'm attempting to close that out anyway, and go back to this party summary. So that's in it in a nutshell, as far as Facebook groups that go. Um, I, do have a, I do have a link to the mock nail bar for Facebook that um, Jessica Moten did for us. And I was going to post the video um, interview that we did with Jessica because she's been super successful. She was number three in the company um, in um, for the for the year of inception until that that full year. She was number three in the company, and she only has six months to do it. And she's only had two live events, so they were all on Facebook. So anybody that that uh, that discounts Facebook parties as as um, successful, you, you just need to get the right mojo going basically and some parties are going to be a flop and some of them are going to be fabulous um so i guess that's it for now for me dar that you have any questions follow is amazing i know that's i can't get over it i i want to go and redo every single facebook party i even have going that's amazing <laughs> thank goodness i've been holding off on my next two for the new back office i'm so excited to use that board Thank you. I know how, how much work it takes to set up a Trello board. So I know you do. <laughs> uh, thank you. And I can't, I, so appreciative to that. Holy cow. So like she said, you guys take advantage of it. It's all right there. I'm mean, right at your fingertips. You can get Trello on your phone and just sit there and, and copy and paste right from there or your computer, both places. So, so the only thing I didn't have is I don't have homework for them unless they wanted to create a Facebook party and invite me. Oh, there you go. And and um, I did go and accept your admin, and I added April to a guest so she can order some mail so I can get some free ones. Oh, there you go. <laughs> You're already um, started. So yeah, I found so many good points. I mean, I love that Norma Clark one with everything right in there, the Frank list, the wish list, the um, and what they need to make the party. Yep. Um, the party survey. Uh, I mean – and you have it all right there. They don't even need to search for this because thank you for showing them how to get into the nail fees. Yes. And you brought up such a good point of um, not taking the ones with watermarks on it, not taking the ones with someone else's name on it. And look closely because they can be very fine print. I've learned I have to wear my glasses when I'm looking. Because <laughs> I think there's no name and then they squeezed it in between a finger or something. You don't want someone else's name up there. So right. uh, not to mention, if they've watermarked it, technically you're not supposed to take it. So, um, so yeah, I, um, how about you, April? Did you have anything? I, I, you know, I didn't realize that there was descriptions in groups. That I, I love, I've not done that. I just like, I had like an announcement thing, but I love that description part. Like, I didn't even know that was there. Um, the other thing, I don't know if, if you guys were not sure what a third party app is. So a third party app is a, website where you are paying for them to post on your behalf. So um, Scentshare that a lot of us have been using is $10 a month or it's $100 for the year. So you can get a discount if you want, but it is a paid application. Um, there are ways to do um, scheduling posts in Facebook itself in that group. But one of the benefits I found about Scentshare is if I have multiple parties starting on the same day, I can be um, selecting all of those parties at one time versus if I were just to be scheduling in Facebook, I have to be in that group and then go four separate times. So it's really a decision on if you want to spend the money for it and if you think it'll be worth it. But the first month is free, so it's worth trying for that first 30-day 30, 30 right. trial. Right. And with the way that Facebook keeps changing everything, you know, you can just use Facebook and schedule it, but you cannot schedule an event. You have to schedule, you have to use a group to schedule for Facebook. Mm -hmm. So 
um, and you can't schedule an event for um, the third party apps anyway. So um, you can use Facebook to schedule in those groups. If you don't have a lot going on right now, you wanna just keep trying that um, before you invest in a third party app, that's good too. Um, thank you for pointing that out. I, I just assume people know about that. And even the scheduling posts, you can't do that just on regular pages either. You, like if you were in your business page and stuff, you ha that's for groups. So even if you don't want to pay, you know, like since share, you're kind of stuck in that group. They're for, they're, what they're doing is they're trying to get people in groups instead of events and stuff. Um, the key really I, like, is that I didn't, I've only ever done groups for my parties um, because I did an event way at the beginning and didn't, I, I heard the group was more successful, but I like how you can schedule it out and have that window of time. And then you have the two weeks. So that might make me try an event as opposed to a group one of these times just to see if there's a difference in um, response. So thanks for pointing both out and showing us both. Sure. The, well, key to those those Facebook awesome. parties, the key to those Facebook parties is definitely the hostess and doing yeah. as much as you can to get them involved. Yep. Yep. So thank you. And um, we should probably end this because I know we've kept people on, but I'm sure – They've earned t or learned tons of valuable things. Um, April, did you have homework you wanted to give your people? I really just wanted, if there is anybody who has done a vending event, if you would please post some pictures of your, of your um, uh, tables so that ladies can kind of get an idea for anybody who's new and starting. That was really one thing I think that would be really beneficial um, for all of us. Perfect. All right. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. And make sure um, you're watching this video. I have a feeling people could watch this one over and over to get um, lots of good info because there was tons in here. All right. Thanks, you guys. Have a great night, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.